Hello, we are Fleming Forestry Technicians, all three of us. Um, <clears throat> today we are going to be talking about the, some of the edible products you can uh, make with uh, sumac from Staghorn Sumac, which is also known as Rustafia and is a member of, don't eat that, of the Anacardacea family, which also has cashews, pistachios, um, poison ivy, poison oak, and poison sumac. <clears throat> um, poison sumac does not look like staghorn sumac at all, so it's pretty impossible to confuse the two. Um, the best time to harvest staghorn sumac is in between August and October, uh, so not right now, but um, we're going to follow the trend and just go ahead and pretend that it's uh, August and October, or between that time, right now. And we're gonna go ahead and look for some sumac to harvest. Um, so it's between August and October and we're walking through our conservation area here and sumac is usually found on roadsides, forest edges, or large openings in like early successional forests because um, it's very shade intolerant. Uh, it really needs the sun. So we're trudging along here through our forest and we come across this very, very full beautiful um, array of staghorn sumac trees here. There are smaller trees between like 10 to even 30 feet tall. Uh, they have large uh, compound leaves alternately arranged. They're serrated. There's like 10 to 24 leaves on, um, on one. And then you'll see these big uh, red buds. I like to call them buds. Um, and what we're looking for is vibrant buds. And if you grab it, Let's go ahead and take some here, a bud like that. Grab it, You're gonna, it's nice and sticky. Uh, the color is very vibrant. And if you smell it, it smells like citrus. You're gonna keep that, that's what you want. Uh, if you come across, come across one that looks like this, it's all dry and crappy, smells like nothing. Don't use that. So we've collected a bunch of nice, beautiful, red nugs of staghorn sumac. Luna, come here. Um, one of the technicians just ran off. I don't know what she was getting up to, but she's back now. So um, we're gonna, me and the gals here, we're gonna collect our sumac and we're gonna head on home to our oven and um, we're gonna go ahead and make two products. So boom, we're pretending we're at home here with our oven. Of course, if you have a dehydrator, that works much better, but in this case, we have an oven. So, <clears throat> but first, before that, our first application, you're gonna take your nice big red nugs and you're gonna put them into whatever big juice container you like to have for parties. And you're gonna fill that up with some water. And after you've thrown your like four or five big sumac nugs in, some nice cold water, maybe some ice. Um, and then I like to put in my favorite berries and fruits, preferably ones that are in season, locally sourced even. Um, and then some spices, you know, even like mint is usually best and that in itself is just a nice delicious uh, lemonadey drink sumac is citrus so people like to call that sumac aid most have heard of that um you can even add liquor to it it's delicious rum vodka gin you know anything clear <clears throat> and that's one application the next application we'll be talking about is my favorite one and that is a dried spice so we're going to take our sumac and we're going to put it in the dehydrator or in our oven oven you're going to set it to 150 250 and you're going to dry that out so it's going to take however long your oven takes so we all know what dried spice feels like right so that's our our desired product we're going to take that dried sumac we're going to let it cool my technicians are going insane right now i'm sorry so we're going to let our sumac cool and then we are going to take those nugs and we're going to individually pick all the little fruits off of it so these little balls we're gonna pick them all off that is the fruit the seed of the sumac and we're gonna toss those into the food process and we're gonna blend that up and then we're gonna get that mixture we're gonna put it into a sieve a very fine steel sieve we're gonna place that sieve over a steel bowl preferably with one to two inches of clearance and then we're gonna use our hand and we are gonna press all of that through the sieve because what we want is the casing of the seed that is where all the flavor is the seed itself is very hard and unpleasant to eat and it has no flavor 
all of our citrusy flavor for our sumac is found in the shell casing. And once we have that, we have a nice powdered sumac spice. And we can put that in anything you would use citrus for. I like to put it in Caesar salad. I like to put it in hummus on a Mediterranean pizza. It's delicious. You can make tea with it. You can make jam with it. Again, anything you put citrus in. Um, also, nice fresh heirloom tomatoes. You grow those in your backyard or they're in season locally. Salt, sumac, amazing. Good stuff. So yeah, those are two very good applications of sumac. Oh, one more thing. Zatar is a very um, well-known spice in the Middle East. I use it a lot, maybe you do too, but sumac is a main ingredient in that. If you did not know, now you know. Um, so yeah, that's sumac. And the technicians, thank you for your time. And as do I. Uh, thanks.